Welcome to Strength in the Numbers. My name is Andrew Codd, accountant, author, and commercial finance entrepreneur. And it's my job each week to bring you leaders in finance and business and deconstruct with them their real stories, insights, and hard-won lessons into practical advice on the key strengths and qualities you need to remain relevant in accounting and finance today, as well as the steps you can begin to take to elevate the impact you make to have a fun, successful, and rewarding career in accounting and finance. Now let's go over to the show. Hi everyone and welcome to today's show. Uh, This is a bit of a different episode. Um, So far we've had some amazing stories and great ideas from guest mentors we've already had on. And in the process we've reached listeners in 94 countries and reached our 30th podcast. So a way of celebrating these facts is to perhaps select a few best bits of advice um, from four guest mentors from four continents that we've had on the show. And the, you know these types of bits of advice were really where they wish they'd known earlier in their careers which probably would have given them a bit of a jump start to having some more success fun and impact a bit earlier in their finance and accounting careers so if you only listen to one episode uh, please make it this one this week you will not be disappointed so the first bit of advice we've selected for you is from Anders Leo Lindbergh one of the most influential finance professionals on LinkedIn over the last couple of years With over 250,000 blog views, Uh, Anders is also the founder of two groups, uh, one the Finance Business Partner Forum and the other is on digital finance, covering off the two main mega trends in our profession at the moment. In this little snippet, Anders shares with us why it's important to focus on what you're doing right now. Uh, put your energy into that and then get up from behind your desk and how we can go and build relationships that add value to our stakeholders in the business. I think if you're just starting out, and uh, I also wrote about this in a blog post a year, a year ago, I think you need to focus on what you're doing right now. If you keep looking uh, ahead to what's going to happen in, in, in five years or even two years' time, you will not have the focus to be successful in what you're doing right now. And I think, you know, that's talking from personal experience. You know, I, I, I kept just looking, okay, so what's going to happen to me in two years? What's going to happen to me in five years? Am I more successful? Am I more up the career, to, the career ladder and so forth? And it just, it, it drains your, your, your mental energy for what you're doing right now. And it means you're not able to perform at the best. So if you are just starting out as a young professional today, then focus on what you're doing right now and do well. And then, you know, once a year, if you have a career talk with your manager, you can always talk about what should happen the next year or two. But focus on what you're doing right now and don't get yourself clouded up by what could happen in two or five years. If there's one thing colleagues in accounting finance could, you know, could do better and stay, stay relevant, what should we be looking to do over the next 12 months in your mind? To me, it's quite simple. Get up from your desk, go to your most important stakeholder, ask him or her what is your most important challenge or problem that you're working on right now and how can I help you solve it? If you do that today, tomorrow, every day, the next year, you will find yourself in a much better place, of course, providing that you actually can help them solve that problem. Yeah, and may- maybe just expanding a bit on it. I mean, you, can, you will often hear the, the excuse that, yeah, I talked to my stakeholder and they're really happy with what they're getting, so I don't really know what should I be doing. And I think there are, there are two more things to consider here. Well, one is if your stakeholder is, is not letting you know what their true problems are, well, then you've got to try and find out for yourself and surprise them in a positive way. If you can continue to surprise them in a positive way, you will build the relationship, they will open up, and suddenly it will be much easier to collaborate about things. And even if you can't figure it out for yourself, then every meeting you sit in with your stakeholders, they will be talking about issues that you can do something about, even if they're not speaking directly to you, even if they're having a conversation with someone else, you can pick up on it. I mean, just to give you an example, I was uh, at a meeting uh, last week with some of our uh, some of our CFOs in, 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 in one part of our business, and they had uh, a key business stakeholder come in every morning at the start of the, the, the meeting day and then talk about whatever was on the agenda. And of course, they were speaking directly to these CFOs, but still, this particular stakeholder that had in that the day I was there, she was mentioning at least five to six things that these CFOs could go straight back to their teams and say, okay, this is the most important problem we have to work on right now because if we can solve this, 
we will be solving the problem of one of our most important stakeholders. But the stakeholder never really said to them, okay, I have, you have to fix this for me. But you can pick it up, do it anyway, try it in a positive way, and you build a relationship. And it's, it's really that simple. Whenever you have an interaction, there's something to pick up on that you can turn into something that helps you build a relationship, help you add value. Yeah, I, actually, there's, there's a good saying you just reminded me of. That's why we have two ears to listen twice as much as we speak. <laughs> so, um, so, and again, it's a simple advice, but, but uh, he did it very well and that has helped me. So, Anders, thank you for sharing such a relevant example as well. We were talking a bit about the future there. You know, in your mind, what's the most important quality for an accounting finance professional to have today? The most important quality is the ability to develop relationships. If you can develop a relationship with your stakeholders, then uh, then you come out as a winner. Because, you know, being able to develop a relationship, it, it takes in all the things that a finance professional has to be able to do. Because if you, if you can't, you know, if you can't do analysis, if you can't solve problems, uh, if you can't, you know, if, if you can't do all sorts of things that are related to finance, you will not be able to develop that relationship. So that is really, that is really what's key. I mean, someone without any skills, any ability to do anything, to not be able to develop a, uh, a good relationship with an important stakeholder. So so that, that for me, would be the, the, the one thing you have to choose. Our next bit of advice comes from guest mentor Kelly McCleary, a vice president in finance from the United States. And Kelly's one of the most thoughtful and encouraging people I've had the pleasure of ever talking to. And she shares with us why knowing ourselves is so important and can help us create a competitive advantage just by leveraging our own strengths because these make us unique and successful leaders bring their unique strengths forward and that would allow us then to deliver more impact within our businesses and careers and Kelly then goes on to share perhaps the four things people can look for from their finance leaders if they want to either model them to be successful or to follow finance leaders who are successful. That's why we started the book with knowing ourselves is we all have different natural abilities and talents, but we also have different passions. And so it's a matter of tapping into that, which makes you uniquely you. I view it as we all have an ability to create a competitive advantage, and that is in leveraging our strengths. And one of the books, Strengths Finders, is quite popular and talks about that concept. And I think it's really important because we tend, because of the feedback we get, we tend to sometimes focus too much on our opportunities or our weaknesses Mm -hmm. instead of our strengths. And yet it's our strengths that make us unique and that have helped us achieve the success that we've had. And we need to not forget to continue to build and develop those strengths as we go through our careers because it's what got us where we're at and that's what's going to make us special and unique and give us that competitive advantage going forward as a leader. You, you might have quoted, there's probably around 200,000 leadership books out there in the market at the moment. Yes. And I imagine a lot of them are probably suggesting this one size fits all approach. And and what you're really in effect saying is, no, no, the, the leadership approach that's going to work for you is, is one that's unique to you, one's, one that's building on your strengths, your unique strengths. And that's what's going to allow you to develop your competitive advantage. Is that a fair sort of summary to, to say? Yeah, it certainly is. And one of the things that when I when I have the opportunity to speak to students or uh, MBA graduates about leadership, I ask them to imagine a leader or two that they admire. And then when we talk about who they came up with, sometimes they're public figures, sometimes they're a teacher or coach that they've that they've known in their lives, but they have very different styles. And to me, that's the liberating part of thinking about leadership is that if you think about it, there are quiet leaders and there are vocal leaders, introverts and extroverts, and a lot of different styles can all be effective. And I really think that, and we talk about it in the book, that there are really four things people are looking for in a leader but not a specific personality necessarily. And those four things are trust. Studies show that that's the number one thing people want in their leader. Another is vision. They want to know that a leader is going to take them somewhere worth going. The third is execution. It's not much fun having a vision if you never actually get there. And then the last is a bit uncommon to think about in leaders, although more of that is growing with concepts like emotional intelligence, and that is caring. 
people want to know that they are that their leader has their best interest in heart and so you can have a lot of different personality styles and as long as you've got those four uh, you can be an effective leader our third bit of advice comes from one of our guest mentors from australia brad eisenhuth who is an expert from his many years working with finance professionals and their employers on what makes people deliver a successful impact within finance and accounting and he also shares how these can also help us to have fun, rewarding and successful careers within our profession. Um, He then goes on to share his chin model, which will help you better understand how to gain gain clarity and become high performing, grow your influence and network as a finance professional within your organization and perhaps even within your industry. Clarity is is about looking at two features in our, our career. First is internally, so what is it about Uh, me that drives me who am I being self-aware about the things that I'm good at and what I'm not so good at or where I I enjoy spending my energies and once you understand that this becomes like this centerpiece of your compass your career compass where do I take that where do I take all this thing these these um, strengths that I have all these values that I believe in these things are important to me and once you appreciate that then you start to use that compass in that direction. You say, well, what does great look like? This version of success, what are some of the things that I'd like to be doing? How do I understand the functional and behavioral components of, a, of someone that you know, is doing what I'd like to be doing in the future? Can I tap into it and really appreciate that? Rather than just making a judgment of a job spec or rather than just making a judgment of what a recruiter tells you, how do I really understand what it looks like to operate at that level in the future? Um, and start to capture that you know, through people and through some experience and, and playing around with it. So clarity is, is, is an evolving piece, but typically for people that are, are, are at least clear on that direction, they can build structure around that. The next is performance or high performance. So it's realizing that um, two things. Performance is uh, essentially measured or subjective. It's, it's measured in the eyes of the beholder. So when we're in any organization or when we're in the marketplace or when we're looking at our career, we need to appreciate that performance that we create uh, that, or the work, the way we deliver our role um, is, is, is directly relevant to this this idea of um, where we're going in the business and what's important to getting there. And the more that you tap into that and the more that you engage with stakeholders that that you create that value for, the more they trust you, the more they appreciate you, the more they'll support and develop you. And it's that whole give and take piece that I talked about a little bit earlier. So realizing that performance is a huge driver to career achievement and attracting more career opportunities is really, really valuable. And that's, that's something that no matter where you're at in your career, when you, if you can take a step back, and maybe do this every few months or when we, when you're on a particular phase in, a, in an organization. So what is performance in the eyes of the people I support? Um, now, sometimes what people feel is great and what you can deliver is not right, right? So what you start to uh, you, you start to realize, well, hang on, where is my strength and where is this organization going? This, this doesn't play to my strengths. In fact, it's an environment that doesn't make me feel good and I can't perform effectively here. Then maybe that's a really good indication that you're not in the right environment to create strong performance and you start to look at well where is it that I I can find this sweet spot where can I get a balance between where I'm going and where my my strengths and performance can be really really valued The, the final two parts are influence and network so influence is about how you convey your message as a leader so there's this external component now we're all leaders we're all influencing others we're all engaging with others you know regardless of whether we're in accounts payable and dealing with a supplier or a financial definitely the financial controller or, or a you know finance business partner dealing with the sales and marketing team or whatever it may be there's always an element of an influence and a need for the other party to to come on a journey with us and realizing that we're a leader uh, as early as possible is is very important. Now that conveying of message helps us in different ways. It can help us, you know, achieve a promotion. It can help us build and collaborate with others. It can help us, um, you know, message uh, something to a very large audience and a group and and, and take them where they need to go. Um, the second part of influence is is our internal influence. So it's looking at resilience and mental toughness. When when I talk to a lot of finance professionals, they say to me things like, "I'd love to be a CFO," or "I'd love." to do these sorts of things but then the mental toughness piece falls over so what they need to do to get to this goal 
they're perhaps not prepared to do. They won't go out of their comfort zone to move into places or do things. Perhaps it's they're lacking a little bit of confidence. Perhaps it's the know-how. Perhaps it's, um, you know, this whole idea of, um, you know, uh, just generally doing what needs to be done and being prepared to, to, to be resilient through some challenges, right? But this whole idea of mental toughness and resilience, bouncing back, resilience is about bouncing back from challenging times and being flexible and malleable in the way that your your emotions handle with challenges and, and mental toughness, being prepared to achieve a goal. Um, the final piece going back to that is it, it, bringing this all together is network. So the sweet spot is we have great people around us that help us achieve. And those people can be within our organization. They, they help us get things done. And and, and, and actually in, in the eyes of those people that you work with, you want to be seen as someone else can, can add value to them as well. Um, and then also externally. So, you know, talking about the example I talked about with the SAP implementation before or, or, or the mentorship example you used in your own career, Andy, you know, these people that can show us what the other side of the fence looks like, how can we get there a little bit more efficiently, how can we solve these problems in a way that is uh, more effective. And once you get these people around you, you tend to find that, you know, the, the, the cycle of doing and working on all of those four components uh, typically leads you to a place where you're, you're feeling really rewarded, you're feeling happy, you're probably attracting good opportunity. And, and you know, you're waking up in the morning excited. It doesn't necessarily mean you're, you're not challenged. In fact, it probably means that you do have challenges and, and things that you need to do to, to make a difference. But ultimately, you know, as I said, going back to that clarity and performance component, these are things that invigorate you. These are things that, that make you excited and happy so once you if you can go through that cycle and, and think about well where where is it that i might have a deficiency for a lot of people there's that issue on clarity that are they doing things that genuinely make them happy and testing that and challenging that and getting some some feedback around that is really really powerful for others it's network it's it's that they have they don't actually they haven't invested in their network over their career you know they've worked with some really fantastic people early in their career and they've just let them wander off and, and not maintain a relationship or value that relationship and there's a lot of things that can come on stuff. So my view, typically, when you look at that sweet spot concept, is think about within those four areas, um, what is it that potentially might uh, might be a deficiency or might be holding you back from uh, from reaching this version of success or, or career 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 value that you're you're looking for. And our final bit of advice comes from guest mentor Chidma Gaga from Nigeria, who is one of the most enthusiastic and fun to talk to accountants and finance professionals I've ever met. Now, although she's now working at one of the world's largest finance institutions in Canada, Chidma used to lead customer service teams, and she shares what we in finance can learn about the customer perspective, and then how that can even help us to be more successful and deliver better impacts and have more successful and rewarding careers in finance and accounting. What you have to always understand is that a business or an organization is in business because of the customer. So even as a finance team, you have to also ask yourself, who is my customer? Who am I in business for? Right. And your whatever you're doing, your processes, your um, operation flow should be in favor of the customer, not in your favor. Which brings me back to what I'm saying, like sometimes as finance professionals, we get so caught up with our, proce- our procedures, our uh, concepts, you know, that we forget that the reason we do all of this in the first place is to support the customer. So you must ask yourself as a finance uh, professional, who is your customer? If it's the business, then whatever you do is to support them, is to make things easier for them and not make it more difficult. So from that perspective, I think we as uh, as professionals to be able to better support yeah, at, um, at our businesses. Actually, you just reminded me of a funny story. It was, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to say the company I was uh, working with, but it was on one of my interim engagements. And I had one of the teams <laughs> complaining about how annoying the customers were. And I said, oh, those annoying customers, you mean the ones that actually pay your wages? <laughs> it's yeah, like, exactly. there would be no business without the customers. And, you know, like they were in finance and it's very easy being sometimes removed from so far from the front line to think like that. But, you know, like uh, there was a really yeah. good discussion on LinkedIn and they were asking whether or not finance was a cost center or profit center but really you know there is no such thing internally really as a profit center or cost center the only true profit exactly. center is the customer exactly the, that the customer is the only true profit center is the only true profit center so whatever we do must be something that is geared towards making 
our processes and our products easier for the customer to accept. You know, I, I, I was worked with a manager who told me like, look, the only way you can ad- advance professionally and do that fast is if you learn how to work with people. And I found that to be very true. You know, you could be ambitious, you can think, you can push, but nobody by themselves can. You, I, I, I strongly believe that you cannot achieve your full potential in isolation. You need to be able to work with people. You need to be able to collaborate and learn to understand people. And the only way you can build that is by developing your emotional intelligence. You have to be able to read people, know how to work with them, know how to bring out the best in them. And sometimes as you do that, you become a better person yourself and then you're also able to you know, become the best that you can you know, be. And on your, your journey developing that sort of skills, emotional intelligence, I suppose, what if other people were to follow that type of journey, like what what's something they could practically work on to, to get going? I would say go back to something I said earlier, um, Andrew, which is just to listen to people. Like yeah. really listen. Yeah, that, that's a skill that I see that we can never master, right? Sometimes you feel that, oh, I'm a good listener, but you have to keep asking yourself, am I really listening? Am I practicing good communication skill you have to build yourself up in that so there you have it hope you enjoyed today's show if you'd like to know more about our guests today their bio and follow up on the resources mentioned during the show you can find all the relevant links and more at sitnshow.com there you'll also be able to get access to earlier shows read the latest blogs there's also an opportunity to subscribe to our newsletter which will give you heads up as to when the next show is coming out, latest events, news, and anything that's going to be relevant to help you have a fun, rewarding, and successful career in finance and accounting. And just before you go, we really appreciate your feedback. If there's something we can do better on the show, something that's not working, or something you'd like to see, even a guest you'd like for us to invite onto the show, someone who you think might be able to benefit you more and also the rest of our community, please let me know. You can email me. I'm at andrew at sitnshow.com or feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Just drop me a message so I know how you found me and we can connect. And really, it's our community that will make the show. If we keep engaging and driving each other on, we'll keep on building our strength in the numbers. When all is said and done, if we can do the numbers better and finance better, we'll create more opportunities for ourselves, our friends, our families, our communities and our businesses. So until next time, have a good rest of the week. Take care and let's keep building our strength in the numbers. 